Now, if the state does legalize gay marriage this year, next year, opponents could bring a referendum. By court order, Janet's body has to be returned into the ground within 48 hours. That's Wednesday evening. Car is getting by just fine. However, if you walk with me here on Cleveland Ave, you can see there's quite a bit of work to do, a lot of slush to still get out of the way, a lot of work to get done here. Now, with me here is Ed Plank. He's with the Washington County Highway Department. U.S. Marshals have actually brought in America's Most Wanted in hopes that nationwide attention will help bring in the escaped inmate, Albert James Vout. One idea is to take apart the Smith House and then move it directly across the street to this empty lot. It was once a gas station, now just going to be pavement. I'm walking here on the center of I-70 westbound that are on the 36 and a half mile marker. These two black and white horses behind me are among the worst that were saved from Kentucky. You can still see on the sides of their backs the ribs that are showing. The Humane Society is making sure that they don't see other horses for at least five days that they remain in quarantine right here. Byron Standard is one that comes from international standards. It's one that takes what the bees produce and puts it directly into the bottle. It's pure natural honey. To help break it all down, I got out a pile of pennies. Now, of the 10 cents, less than two cents of that is going to go towards the disabilities group, and one half of that is going to go towards the folks they already serve. The other half of that is going to go to the folks that are on that waiting list. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is that those two pennies combined will total up to $30 million when all is said and done. Well, a Franklin County couple was charged today with 48 counts of animal cruelty for keeping 24 dogs in unsanitary conditions. West Virginia moved one step closer to a special gubernatorial election by the end of the year. Today, Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley called this year's budget the most challenging in years. I'm walking here on the center of I-70 westbound that are on the 36 and a half mile marker here in Washington County. It's clear just from walking around on this road, the cause of this crash is that this road is completely covered in ice. Exactly how the wreck started is anyone's guess. Authorities believe one car hit the brakes too hard, sending everyone spinning. At this all of a sudden, boom. I ain't had an accident in 40 years. Borowski's Kia ended upside down in a ditch and was towed. And he wasn't alone. The crash happened just after 11 a.m., but it took well over an hour for ambulances to arrive. Had considerable delays getting on the scene due to heavy traffic in the snow. But an ambulance from a private company just happened to be involved in the pileup. Cars all over the place spinning around, tried to avoid them. We got our supplies, we got some oxygen, and got our, our trauma bag out and did what we could. Just went over to the, the most serious incident and tried to take care of that. And, I was here by myself, nothing else I could do. When ambulances did finally arrive, six people were taken to the hospital, including kids, but no one was seriously injured. Interstate 70 westbound was shut down for over three hours. Authorities say the roads weren't yet pre-treated. We had to use extreme caution. The roads were extremely icy. We had a real brief snow squall. The road temperatures were already down below freezing. Causing them to freeze over quickly. From Washington County, Adam Weiner, WHAG News. Kevin, Heather, and their two children moved into their home just a couple weeks ago, and now they're already moving out. They just learned they've been living with a dead body for the past two weeks. <sighs> the foulest odor that ever smelled in my life. When we first moved in, it wasn't as strong as it, you know what I mean? Like every day the smell was getting stronger and stronger and stronger, so you can just tell that the body was over there when we had moved in. Next door in their duplex, the body of Tammy Meyerly was discovered Sunday morning. Heather and her landlord discovered the body when they went looking for the source of the smell that it had become too much to bear. And then I walked to the window where the flies was. I said, there's something dead in here. The smell's coming from out of here. There's something in here dead. Like I said, I thought it was a cat or whatever. I just seen a mattress facing the alley with nothing on it. And as I looked down, like as my eyes moved over from the bed a little bit more, then I just asked when I seen the blanket and, and it looked like a structure of a body under it. And then that's when I just started flipping. They leave their door open, the fan blowing, and they've been cleaning everything. But they consider their home a lost cause, and they're moving out. The smell was just so strong, I couldn't even sleep. I had to actually put my hand or my arm over my nose to try to breathe. With that fan being open, and their windows over there being open, her body was in the next room over right there. The smell was just coming here, you know what I mean? Right through the wall. Right through that wall is where her body was. 
We tried to reach their landlord, but he didn't answer our calls. Heather and Kevin are waiting to hear how Tammy's body could sit for so long undiscovered, but they aren't waiting to move on with their life. In Hagerstown, Adam Weiner, WHAG News. This standard, mostly brick, boarded up, rundown looking building located on the first block of South Market Street in downtown Frederick isn't actually a building at all. It does. It definitely fooled me for a long time. It looks like an old house. It's just a wall propped up by steel with nothing but grass and gravel behind it. I thought that because I walked by and I saw a light coming through the crack. Uh, a waste of space. I don't know, I guess it, it keeps up the whole scenery around here, but there's nothing behind it. Those who work or live in the surrounding area seem to be familiar with the facade. Others, though? No, I had no idea. Actually, we, were, we actually were walking by it about 10 minutes ago, and we pointed it out. And, yeah, it's, it's really weird that it would be just a wall. <laughs> Even the firefighters who work directly across the street are short on answers. I occasionally have people who come into the station who uh, don't realize until after they've been here a while that it's just the front of a building and, and actually there's nothing there, it's just a, a blank wall. The city's historic district planning department says back in the 1970s, there was a flood that destroyed the building that was here. All that remains is this wall. And ever since then, all this land's been used for is a parking lot. But it might not stay that way. Someone recently put up these for sale signs. It was a surprise to us when it went up for sale a couple months ago. City Hall says it's a private property and the owners are trying to sell the lot. There's a phone number advertising this property on the wall, so we called it, Hello. but got no response. Maryland's Assessment and Tax Department says the original structure was built in 1880. It says there's almost 4,000 square feet of space on the lot, and at least for now, it sits empty. In Frederick, Adam Weiner, WHAG News. What started as a love for dogs turned into a case of animal cruelty. A couple lived in this green township home with, get this, 24 dogs. And the owners almost never let the dogs out of the house. They've been in the house going to the bathroom with the feces and urine for three years because the neighbors complained about the barking. Buck Hessler then called state police, got a search warrant, and they were horrified by what they found. Conditions of the house was horrendous. The worst that I've ever seen in the six years of doing this in Franklin County. At the Cumberland Valley Animal Shelter in Chambersburg, 23 Basset Hounds are being cared for. 13 of them are puppies. As soon as they came in, it was kind of like an assembly line. We had the shots and, the, and, the, and all the medicines ready for them, and we just kind of went one right after the other, right after the other. They're in relatively decent health. We had a veterinarian look them over, and they really do seem to be pretty healthy. <laughs> The animal shelter expects to have the puppies ready for adoption by Saturday, but they do have a warning for potential future owners. These dogs are adorable, okay? I mean, I would scoop them all up if I could. Here's the thing, okay? I guarantee you, this is a guarantee, none of these dogs are housebroken, okay? They're going to go to the bathroom all over your house. The puppies have razor sharp little puppy teeth, and they're going to chew. They love to chew. Meanwhile, David and Perry Flory are getting ready to move out of their home. David Flory blames the situation on a neighbor. He says the neighbor complained to him any time he let the dogs out into the yard. David Flory tells me that one of the dogs they had they didn't even know was pregnant when she suddenly had a full litter of puppies. They say they were caring for all the dogs and trying to give them all away, but were quickly overwhelmed. And now the Florys expect to be foreclosed on. In Green Township, Adam Weiner, WHAG News.